Joe Ganji's Midwest Martial Arts. Uh, we're going to have a great segment this time around on it. We're going we're to show some women's self-defense, kickboxing drills, youth focus uh, with uh, bike defense, what to do if you're riding a bike for the uh, kids coming up is do this due to that this show is being shown through uh, May and June. Again, today's segment, uh, during the women's self-defense, we are using a live blade, we are using live women, but <laughs> at this, we want you to be careful, especially when you're exercising, uh, when you're doing these types of techniques on it. Practice with someone who's not going to mind getting hit from time to time, somebody who's not going to complain. You don't, want somebody, you don't want to be training in self-defense and have somebody moan and groan, telling you hit them too hard, you're not going to hit them hard enough or the stuff doesn't work. You want somebody to work with you who is positive, especially doing women's self-defense. Uh, the kickboxing drills, uh, some great basic drills. Uh, today, Sensei Kevin will not be with us as he is uh, boxing for the Golden Gloves Championships. Good luck to him. Uh, youth focus, defense on a bike. Again, summer timeout. Make sure that your bike is registered. You have some good locks. And make sure you wear really good reflective clothing. Uh, I would like to announce in regard to the St. Jude's seminar, which we just held. Obviously, by the time you see this, it's over. We raised $2,000 as a charity for St. Jude's uh, Children's Hospital. Uh, our number one kicker was Kyle Sieber. Uh, Kyle threw 1,701 kicks in 50 minutes, which was amazing. He took first place in the kicking division there. Uh, and we also like to uh, thank all the people that uh, worked with us in regards for this collection for St. Jude's. Again, I think it was very, very uh, helpful. Uh, the help was unbelievable. Everybody pitched in. Everybody gave up their spare and free time. Uh, moving on, we would like to show today uh, Basically, what I like to show is eclectic systems as opposed to traditional systems. Uh, I'm going to show you some of the basic techniques and why they, how a traditionalist might work a defense as opposed to how an eclectic person works a defense. Today, my assistant is uh, Sensei Brian Silver, Sensei Brian, otherwise known as a Tasmanian devil. Bow. <laughs> First to this side, please. Huh? I to say, why is it different? People always start hearing about this eclectic. Eclectic started uh, basically about, uh, I would say, 15 years ago when people started mixing different martial arts together and uh, took the best techniques of different styles to make them work. Now, on a traditional level, uh, an example, if he throws a straight punch at me, a traditionalist might block it with an outside block or a reverse punch and come back with a straight punch. Now, eclectic, he might, I might use the block but I might got it down, I go to the eyes, follow me, and then come down with the elbow. Uh, again, slow right punch. Here, you see this in a lot of traditional schools. Eglactic type system, he comes in, I block and I strike at the same time. So in Eglactic, he punches me again, I'm going to trap and hit at the same time, as opposed to traditional blocking, re the arm, and then coming back out. If he throws a front kick at me, I don't want to X block down. Again, do that slow, please. I don't want to X block down. Look where my face is at. Okay, he could punch straight out. Okay, this is a traditional value. A galactic value kicks at me. I slap it out the side, fall to the top, boom, kick out the leg. For this type of movements, you don't need to train two years. You actually need to train a good couple of months. So if he comes in with a kick, I'm going to slap it. I'm going to hit him across the temple. I'm going to cut him totally out. So he knows as opposed to going with the front kick, jamming it, then he comes up, jamming it here, and coming out. I want to move with anything he throws. Hit, again, slapping, hitting, kicking the leg out. Okay. Other values, if he does grab me, on a grab situation, please watch the mic on. Okay, instead of dropping to my praying stance and then reverse punching straight out, which looks pretty, but I'll get you a kill in the street. When he grabs me, I automatically want to poke him in the eyes. Okay, or if he grabs me again, I want to here kick him in the groin area. I'm going to grab his hair. I'm going to elbow strike him. Okay. Thank you, Sensei Brian. Okay, off camera. Again, at the end of the show. There will be an address where you can send your, uh, your mail to, send some mail to us. Again, we've got some, we have some great letters uh, sent to us, questions about this style versus that style, or uh, upcoming events in the martial arts. Please keep those letters coming. This is Shihan Joe Ganji signing off for Joe Ganji's Midwest Martial Arts Show. Thank you. Welcome back to 
Joe Gondry's Midwest Martial Arts. Uh, this section, self-defense in the 90s, I'm going to show you some of the women's self-defense, some of the techniques. On my left, we have my wife, Leanne Ganji, and on my right, we have Bonnie Ross, one of our instructors, one of our black belts. Uh, Leanne's going to show some women's self-defense, empty hand defense against grabs. Sensei Bonnie is going to show us some knife defense. Again, what you see now, you're gonna, uh, some of the var variables you're going to see are taught in a lot of s women's self-defense courses on it. Uh, we all have a date for you at the end of the studio for our next free women's self-defense self seminar as part of our uh, community service. So again, at the end of the show, look for the listing. We'll give you the date. We'll give you the date and we'll give you the time as to when you could come to uh, either one of our students. We're gonna have a women's self-defense free seminar. This is no cost to, in either in Nor to women, either in Norwich, our school in Norwich, or school in Prospect Heights. Again, give us a call for the times and the date on it. Okay, ladies, we're gonna start off with Leanne with uh, uh, empty hand defense. Sensei, you step off for a second, okay. Our first mode we're gonna work on is against, a ba uh, against your, your basic come and grab. So if, if Leanne is basically on the side on and you don't normally have this hey babe approach that he grabs you, she counters, goes to the eyes with the fingertips, comes back with the elbow, okay, adjust for a knee to the groin, then re she re-knees again. Okay, do it again one more time slow. She's going to grab, eyes, elbow to the face, knee to the groin, knee to the groin. Now she's going to try and do this with a little bit of degree of control as we don't have any pads on. Okay, normally in our women's self-defense, you will do this with full equipment. You can hit the instructor as hard as you want. Okay, so again, she grabs, eyes, elbows, boom, boom, okay? One more time, again, go, grabs, go, eyes, elbow, knee, and knee again. Okay, our next is going to be against a double hand grab. Let's say somebody comes up and gives you this, how you doing, baby approach. She comes through the middle, pops the ears, rips the eyes with the thumb, and knees to the groin repeatedly until the person either drops to the ground or walks away. Again, slow, please. She comes through center, pops the ears, rips the eyes out, knees to the groin, again, knees again. Okay, okay. She's got to do this a little bit faster. So, yeah, come up, boom, pop, eyes, knee, and knee. All right, good. That's uh, just a base against, these are common att uh, attacks you have, single hand grab, double hand grab. Now, I'm going to show you two common grabs. One is going to be a bear hug or a bear hug from the rear on it. What you want to do is when you get grabbed, sink your weight down, separate the elbows. She's going to hit the groin area, pops out, ripping, elbow, elbow. She's going to step out, boom, and back kick to the groin. She's going to do it one more time, slow. Okay, so again, I grab, she separates, hits the groin, comes back, elbow, elbow, steps out, <laughs> and back kick. She's going to do it fast this time. Again, sink, go, one, two, three, four, okay, one more time, impact with the back kick, please, okay, go, go, one, two, elbow, elbow, okay, impact the kick, okay, one more time, go, go, one, two, three, four, all right, there you go, okay, good, all right, next is going to be with the grab underneath the arm, oh, honey, hi, honey, how you doing, she elbows me to my elbows, just to start to break the grip, then she's going to elbow up to my face, now I'm up to my face, she's going to thrust her hips back to drive me off. Okay, give you a slight side effect from camera one over here. I'm getting good at directing this. So again, on the knee, Greg comes from on the knee, she hits the elbows, hits the elbows, hits the face, hits the face, she drives her, boom, rear back. And I come back up. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, done fast. Hi, honey. Bam, bam, up, elbow, boom, and out. Okay. Now, the next one you have... So what might happen if you get caught on the side? The opponent comes from the side, she counter grabs, she kicks the knee, and she kicks the groin area. Again, done fast, grab, boom, one, two, two. Okay, next situation, which is common, is what we call a hair grab. The opponent grabs your hair. Somebody grabs your hair, trap the hand, okay? Again, kick to the knee, to this lodge, hit the arm, and hit across the throat, bam, or temple area. Okay, one more time, she traps the hand, okay, kicks to the knee, Elbows, boom, that's a variable. Okay, one more time, she grabs the arm, okay, kicks, come across the arm, hits, boom, all right. Thank you, Leanne. All right. Now she's gonna have sense of body out for knife defense. Okay, again, against a knife, if at all possible, 
avoid the situation. Okay? There's going to be time, especially in knife defense with ladies, you're not going to have, you're not going to have time. So just your opponent's going to grab you and they're going to put the knife right up to your throat. Okay. Now, what will happen here is in this type of grab here, what's going to happen is your opponent's going to put the knife up against your throat. What you want to do is you want to come up with the hand, checking, grabbing the throat area. Okay, from here she's going to knee, she's going to rip out, and then she's going to come back and hit. She's going to come back and hit the face here. Please hold the knife, don't do anything with it. Thank you. Again, we're, this is not a dull knife, this is actually a, a real knife for okay. So again, so one more time, it's against the throat, she comes out, she knees, and she rips out. Okay. Okay. Next situation is if the knife is on the opposite side of the throat, she's going to come back up on the opposite side slowly. She grabs, she steps in, breaks the elbow, okay, the knife drops to the ground, she's going to try and move out, and then she's going to front kick, boom, to the face, okay? One more time. So the knife is against the throat area, she comes across, straps the elbow, breaks the elbow, the knife gets loose, okay, she turns around, wrist locks, and front kicks to the face. Next situation, or notice the knife on that side, first it was on this side, show the inside movement. She went to the inside, go, boom, again, rip, elbow, okay? On the outside, she has to go the opposite way, go, boom, break, releases, and front kicks, boom. Okay, good. Now, next situation, which is everybody's nightmare, is the knife is to the throat area. She hit, she's going to have to slowly shift down. Going to, and she grabs her ear so I can't move back. She's going to elbow me to get some distance. She's going to trap my wrist. She's going to step out, and then she's going to kick back to the groin area. So again, this one, you really have to know how to shift really tight. So it's in here. She traps, drops, elbows, knife goes out, boom, out, and then bam, breaks the knee. Okay. Other type of situation, being in tight from in here is when the knife, she's going to do what's called a praying hands collapse. And that's basically from the throat area, she's going to come up, check it, and she's going to drive the knife back into the throat, and she's going to knee. Boom, again, this is not a plain knife, this is the actual real thing. Okay. Leanne, can you come back up? Thank you, Sensei Bonnie. Again, with women, self-defense, you have to be aware, you have to prepare at all times. It's not just, it's not just a matter of I'm getting out there kicking, running elbows, like a lot of people take these quick self-defense courses. You have to practice continuously. You have to make as many seminars as possible. Actually join a school that points out what the difference is between regular martial arts self-defense and kick and run defense, such as what you've shown today. So again, smile ladies, be aware, be prepared. This is Shihan Ganji for Joe Ganji's martial arts, Midwest martial arts show. Thank you, and have a safe life. Joe Ganji's uh, martial, Midwest Martial Arts Show. On uh, today's section of Youth Focus, we have Anthony Loyakano on my left and Scott Barsh on my right. Uh, today's segment is going to deal with uh, one of our summer time's greatest activity, which is bike riding and self-defense with a bike. First thing uh, we must keep in mind when you're, you have a bike is first of all, make sure you have a registration number on your bike and that it's registered with your local police department. Uh, also having a good chain to lock up your bike. Mark it in one way or another so you can ident identify the bike should it get stolen or missing or somebody picks up because there's a lot of bikes that look the same. At the same time, there's also a lot of people who are looking to rip off, basically steal your bike. So again, make sure you have an ID number on your bike that's also registered with the police department. Have a good uh, lock and chain for your bike and always keep an eye on it as much as possible. Uh, we're going to try and work some techniques off of the soft, uh, off the bike and on the bike. Again, you have to practice with these techniques over and over and over until you're comfortable with them. So uh, Anthony and Scott, we're going to bring the bike on for you. We're going to show you some of our variations. Okay, Scott, first of all, is going to show you some movements off of a mounted position. As he gets approached, 
ahead, Jim. So he gets approached by, your opponent grabs the bike on it. From here, you could trap the hand, strike the eye area, punch the arm so he releases and coming back to the face area. So go a little bit faster, go. You go here, trap eyes, punch the arm, and coming across the chin, okay? Again, do that one slow, okay, and grabbing. Okay, eye, punch the arm, contact across the face area. Okay, second variation is, when it comes in again, hitting the knee, striking, and striking the face. So again, now what Scott's doing is he's using the front of the bike, hitting the inside of the knee to knock him off balance, punching across the jaw, and then coming back. So the person releases the front of the bike. Okay, doing it a little bit fast. Okay, as the person straddles, bam, bam, bam. So again, also try and avoid anybody coming in. If somebody gets in at this close range with you, you're in trouble, especially if he's yelling in. So when his arms shoot forward to grab the bike, that is time that you should act. Again, gentlemen, go. Bam, bam, back and forth. Okay. Third. As your opponent grabs it, kicking the thigh, punching out. Again, there's a very limited action you can do unless you dismount the bike. Again, kicking the thigh, punching the face, and releasing out of there. Okay. Scott will dismount on. They're going to switch place now. Okay, now, grab him from a side position here. Okay, the opponent approaches, grabbing him. See, side kicking the knee, punching across the face, kicking again. Okay, do it again slow. Go. Kicking the knee, punching the face, kicking the thigh, make the person release. Okay, second variation. Go. Grabbing, kicking the back, punching out. Okay, do it from the opposite side. Do it from this side. Turn around, get on this side. Okay, again, as he approaches, kicking the knee area, punching across the face, kicking the leg area. One more time. Go. Knee, out, boom. Okay, now, attack comes from the back section. Okay, kick it out and punching out. And again, okay, move the bike up to the center a little bit more on it. Okay, so now you notice what you want to do here is keep your balance with the bike. Try not to let go of the bike unless it's absolutely necessary here. Again, the kicks are maintained low as opposed to being a high kick. An example is show high kick extension. You don't want to try and be fancy and show high kick extension because you have the bike to balance, plus your opponent can grab you. You want to kick low, again, demonstrate low kick. Okay, again, groin area. He could release with one hand and punch the face if he has to. Boom, okay. If he's facing totally the opposite way, with his back towards his opponent, and he spots him behind the shoulder, you could just straight lean your back kick to the groin area. Okay, again, go. Boom. Okay, one more time. Go. Boom. Okay, now the ability also to use the front end of the bike on it. Okay, so now Anthony has it here. He can lift the bike into the opponent's groin area, which is a quite painful act. Okay, <laughs> so again, very simple. If the person reaches for it, he could just drive the bike up. Okay, if he gets in really close, he could use his elbows going across the face area. Okay, reset again, try it, try it again. So now you have a combination of lifting and elbowing. Okay, from a side position, get on this side, another bike on. Huh? Okay, if the opponent does come towards you where when your, your bike is tilted to the side, and now this gives you an opening where you could execute a front kick area to the groin. Boom, okay, front kick to the sole plexus to release. Boom, okay. Again, if somebody attacks you or has, has a weapon on them, such as a knife or, let's say, a gun or there are multiple attackers and so forth, the bike can be replaced. You cannot be replaced. So again, just ba basically drop the bike, let them have it, uh, call the nearest authority to recover the bike. And again, make sure you have identification on all your parts, including the bike itself, your air pump, or anything you might be carrying in the back. Other means of what might happen is your opponent might grab you. If he grabs your wrist, that thing again, you could counter grab to get control on it. Now you could execute like a knee kick to groin kick as fast as possible. One, two. Bam. Okay. Now, other options, if you are sideways, the bike is here, okay? Your opponent is directly behind you now. Now you have your back kick to the groin area, okay? Side kick. Boom. Okay. Now, I want the back kick going to the groin area and the side kick going to the knee. Go. One. Two. 
Okay, if the opponent does grab your body, if he does grab your bike, go to a bear hug type situation. This way you have to go where you could drop the bike, drop the bike, okay, as he drives the bike going to your movement, go, sidestep, break out, go. Okay, now do it faster, do it sharp, let's go. Go, bam. Boom. Okay, at that point, if your opponent does drop down, just get out, take your bike, and run away. Right, okay, pick the bike back up, please. Okay, now that type of situation might be where if you're, I have to adjust the bike here. Let's say you are checking your bike. Let's say Scott is checking his bike out for uh, air pressure and he's done a down position. Now he has to defend himself from this. If the, if the opponent comes in, okay, if he does grab Scott, he could side kick him from a low position. Okay, so now you could defend yourself from a low area. So again, grab, go low, damn, okay. If he does get an example, stand back for a second. If the opponent does come at him with an overhead strike just to hit him, he could high block and punch a groin area. We demonstrate that technique. So again, he knows the attacker coming in, blocking, striking the groin area. Okay, so now you can defend yourself from that zone. He could drop to his side and side kick in the knee. Again, go attack, drop, boom. Again, keeping the opponent away. If you do get grabbed from a rear type position because his back is here, turn around, grab him in a rear choke. What you want to do is stand your body up with them, drive to the groin with your knife hand, okay, come up, elbow, boom, release, back kick, side kick combination, you're out of it. you demonstrate that one again, please? Again, go grab, choke, one, two, and out, okay? Now, next type of situation you might be would be, again, from the back section or the back area. That means basically... Scott's going to be in here, he's looking on the back side on it, and he gets approached from this angle. Okay, coming from this angle, if he does get grabbed, double shoulder grab on it, okay, break out of the situation, get up, go. Front one, two, three, bam. Now you notice what's happening here is the bike is falling, the, atta the attacker is coming into him, spread out for a second, on it. So now everything comes into play, which is what exactly will happen out in the middle of a fight. It's not going to go according to the way you scheduled it. It's going to go to according to what is happening at that point in time. Pick the bike up, please. Yeah. So again, from that type of situation, again, he's, he's in a back angle. Grab him. Demonstrate slow. He grabs. Comes up. One, two, and release. Okay, John. Can you put the bike off screen for me? Please come back up to point. So again, with bikes... Again, safety first. Make sure if you're riding it now, you're riding anytime, you're wearing clothes that people can see, they can spot you right away. Do not ride in the dark. We have a problem with people. A lot of people drive their bikes out in the middle of the night, not in the middle of the night, but close to uh, midnight. I've seen this happen in the road, and it's a very dangerous situation. Wear reflect reflective clothes. Again, identify your bike, identify yourself, and make sure you have a safe and happy summer. So again, be aware, be prepared. This is Shihan Joganji with Anthony and Scott. Hi, welcome to Joe Ganji's Midwest Martial Arts show. Here I am with Arlene Lemus, gold medal champion. Welcome, Arlene, to our show. Thank you. <laughs> well, I know where are you uh, presently located in the United States? I'm uh, currently about 40 miles out of D.C. in uh, Woodbridge in Stafford, Virginia. Okay, and uh, how many schools did you say you're running about now? Uh, we have two schools. We just opened our third, uh, February 1st. Okay. Can you tell us uh, a little bit about your upbringing in the martial arts, like as to how you began, or you know, some of your instructors? Well, I started when I was five years old. Um, my oldest brother had started in martial arts, and he encouraged the rest of our family to start. And I started at that time training with uh, Master John Tai, who is still here and uh, <laughs> producing good students here in Chicago. Um, I went in, and I still consider him my instructor, so I'm still actively training with him in my eyes. Um, I've trained with... Uh, when I chose to take up the Olympic style, I trained with a gentleman by the name of Kareem Jabbar, not the basketball player, but <laughs> the taekwondoist, and he was uh, my coach. He was several-time national champion and U.S. team member, so I asked him to be my coach. 
Okay. How many matches did you go through uh, to get into the Olympics? Uh, well, there's a state qualifying process. Then from states you go to nationals. At nationals, uh, Olympic trials, there were there were probably 3,000 competitors. Of course, all of them not in my weight division, but to, for the event, there were about 3,000 competitors. I fought, uh, I actually had nine fights, and each fight is 33-minute rounds, so, and it's full contact, and it's kind of crazy. You don't wear pads, and it's kind of weird. Oh, that's great, Anna. Can you tell us a little bit about, um, I know you personally from fighting in open tournaments, or the open, uh, the national scene. Can you, uh, Give us some of your most memorable fights that you had. I know you fought Linda Danley. You're one of your so-called arch enemies. I know you've got great friends now. <laughs> that, and uh, a few others. Can you uh, give us a little bit of uh, your insight on that? Sure. Um, I loved fighting Point. I fought Point from about 7 on. He yes, opened star. I, I, I mean, I loved it. I loved doing it. But it came to a point when I was, you know, 18, 19 years old, and I had already won every national event in Point. And I did have a rivalry with Linda Denley, and that went back and forth. First I was number one nationally, then that next year number two, and then number one. Uh, and it just seemed like there was nothing else for me to do. You know, I had trained with, you know, Tom Matuli was my coach. I traveled everywhere with him and his son, Freddie. And uh, I didn't want to quit. There had to be something else. I'm, you know, 19 years old. There's got to be something else to do. And that's when I got introduced to the Olympic style. But, you know, with the open style, I love fighting. I mean, I love fighting right here at Lama Nationals. And it was always great to fight in your hometown. Well, you've always been one of the greatest women fighters in my eyes. I've seen you. I've known you since you were six years of age. And seen you win many, many tournaments coming up on it. And we're all very proud of you here in Chicago. Uh, how are your schools doing so far? What do you foresee your schools? How are they growing? Um, we've just had a, a great response in the area that we're in in Virginia. Um, in general, the areas we're in, the both counties that we're involved with, are just they're considered the fastest, top ten fastest growing counties in the country right now. So the, the area is just experiencing so much growth, and then in turn our schools are. We offer a great product. We have great instructors. I've been lucky enough to be able to pull some of my students from Chicago to resettle in Virginia with me. So I have people that have been my lifelong friends, and also now they work with me. Myself, my cousin Robbie, who I'm sure you remember, yes. Robbie Bear, and uh, Jose Santiago. I mean, we grew up together. We lived on the same block. We were the three amigos. We used to train in my garage. We used to dream about having the school that, I, that we have now. Yeah. So it's it's just been amazing. Yeah, that's great. Uh, right before this interview tonight, on anyways, at the weekend war, uh, Jose Santiago just took a championship on it, took a five-rounder. Right. Uh, the other thing I wanted to ask is uh, how do you uh, foresee things happening in the Olympics as far as you know the martial arts being in the Olympics? Well, Taekwondo is an official sport in the year 2000. For some reason, they have not given it official status after that. They're watching to see what's going to happen in the year 2000 in Sydney. Now, there are a lot of things that are going to have to happen for it to become an official sport beyond that, mm -hmm. those Olympic Games. Um, the changes that are going to happen for us and that are going to affect us most directly as I feel, my prediction is, is that there's going to be a whole new Taekwondo organization representing Taekwondoists in the United States. The United States Taekwondo Union, which is currently the representative to the Olympics, yes. will know by the time the year 2000 comes around, I feel they will not be in power. There's a new organization that's starting called USA Taekwondo. It's for the competitor, by the competitor. They've, they have complete support from the United States Olympic Committee. It's just a matter of heading out in front of a, a, a board that says, yes, this organization is better than the other. Uh, and that's what we're in the process now. And if, uh, our main uh, obstacle right now is trying to tell the average athlete that attends the, tournament, the USTU tournaments as a diehard um, that there is another organization out there. USA Taekwondo is out there, and it's going to offer better tournaments, fairer tournaments, better judging, better treatment of the athletes, and they need membership. So we're going to have to do something to, you know, have the, me the regular Taekwondo athletes feel that joining USA Taekwondo is the right thing to do. Okay, can you uh, give us a little, also, how can I say, a couple answers to how the Taekwondo rules are scored? In competition, I mean, there's. Uh, I've seen a couple of matches, and I've seen people, you know, points being called one way right. or the opposite way, and. Uh 
what is your opinion on that, or can you just tell us what what the rules? You know how what how they're scored by kicks or punches or. Well, the rules are each match, and I'll, I'll describe an international level. An inter international level match is three three-minute rounds with a one-minute break. At the end of each round, a referee actually must just total his scores, her, his or her scores. They must score the point immediately on their scorecard. And uh, although points, technically you can score a point for a punch, it's very hard. The grounds for scoring a point is what they call in the rule book trembling shock or, dis <laughs> yes, or displacement. <laughs> Of a body, okay. So, you would so have to knock right. down, or, or there has to be a major displacement of the body. So it's very hard to generate that much power with a punch to the chest. There's no punching allowed to the face. Mm -hmm. So through a chest protector, it's very hard to really cause trembling shock. Mm -hmm. That's why kicks are scored uh, uh, easy, you know, more, more. than punching. Uh, my, in my mind, the safest rule when you fight taekwondo is kick the head. If you can kick the head, you will win. If you can kick the face, you will win. And of course, and yeah, we know is that when you won the gold <laughs> in Korea, <laughs> kick to the head worked great for you. <laughs> like that. Uh, the, the safest one is, you know, if you can knock someone out, knock them out. Knock them out. Then you don't leave anything, any decision up to the judges. Okay. Uh, what is the name of your school in Virginia? Can you? It, yeah. That, I know you associate. Uh, so you have any association besides Taekwondo or? Um, the, the name of the school is Power Kicks Karate. We're associated with USA Taekwondo. Of course, we compete at the NASCA tournaments that are still out there now. Um, and you know we're trying to get our feet wet again in kickboxing, but it's hard. It's hard in that area. You guys had a great showing tonight. Oh, thank you. Uh, it's hard in Virginia because the boxing commission regulates kickboxing, yeah. so it's very difficult to have any kickboxing cards there. Mm -hmm. uh, where, uh, ex what towns are your school exactly located? So if people want to check you out, we have one in Woodbridge, right. one in Stafford, and our new one is just opened in uh, Fredericksburg. Fredericksburg. Now, besides like uh, Taekwondo, do you offer like women's self-defense classes, oh, yes. uh, children's self-defense? Can you touch off on that? And yes, we have uh, we have a lot of uh, programs that are geared towards the women. We have a great great children's program. We call it our turtle program. It's for four to six year olds. <laughs> and, and we have a blast with them. And uh, we, just do, we just do a lot of neat stuff. Yeah. Anything you want to add on in regards to the martial arts uh, during this interview here? Or? No, I just, I just, you know, it's it's been in one of my passions, you know, and one of my loves, and I'm just so happy to see that it's really been embraced lately. It seems to really have uh, have taken, you know, taken off. There are a lot of people who are involved in it, people who, uh, because of some modern things that have happened, meaning safety equipment and better training, people that the martial arts would have never ever opened the door to yes. you know your businessmen your women your young children it's so much safer now instruction is much better now so it's, it's open to a lot more people yeah, it's a far cry when we started way back uh, in Chicago with no pads exactly, you know, and just anything goes type of rules yeah. on it and uh, it's changed a lot you know when I think about it uh, I'm just uh, a lot ha I'm ha much happier teaching the way I'm teaching now than teaching the way I was taught yeah, so, so are we <laughs> so are we we've really come a long way well this is Joe Ganji with Joe Ganji's Midwest Martial Arts with uh, Arlene Lemus gold medal winner thank you very much for this interview uh, no hope problem. to see you more often in Chicago and if we're out in uh, Virginia we'll be out there visiting you You're welcome anytime okay thank you very much thank you this is Joe Ganji signing off with Arlene Lemus thank you okay picking up action here in the uh, fourth round or beginning of the fourth round with uh, Jose Santiago and his opponent Pancho Villa Jose uh, fighting under Lee Lemus from uh, Kicks and Pancho Villa fighting out of Wisconsin. Jose doing a double round kick on it. We have a counter by Pancho with a hook. Sent up round kicks. Pancho tries a spinning back. There's a spinning back kick by Pancho. Okay, Jose is moving around. He's trying to set up with his left forward. Double round kick. Pancho tries the next kick, which gets jammed on Jose's shoulder. A slip called by referee Tom Harad. Double round kick by Santiago, a right hook, a spinning back kick by Poncho, which just deflects off the shoulders. Yeah, if you know it, you got to watch the timing. So nice hook kick by Santiago. 
Timing is very important in this fight, Sana. You set up, knowing what your opponent's going to do, watch his weaknesses. Nice, nice spinning back kick by Pancho. Hook. Santiago gets him on the ropes. A couple of uppercuts, body hooks. Okay, a couple of hooks again by Santiago. Pancho tries to counter, but to no effect. Round kick by Santiago. Uppercut by Santiago. Front kick by Pancho. Word him off. He's on the ropes. They're getting kind of jammed. Peeling off, send up left right combinations. And Pancho's getting a little bit aware here. He got hit with a couple body shots, a couple head shots in there, which take their toll. Not trying an attempt of a spinning back fist by Pancho. Santiago comes in with left hook to the face, kind of stung. Body shot by Santiago, uppercut by Santiago. Oh, Pancho looked like he was going down there, but he stood up. Unbelievable stamina and courage. Uh, San Santiago's working his way in with body shots. A nice front kick by Poncho on him. Santiago staying on him. Uppercuts, body shots, left hooks. Again, uh, Santiago is wearing the white pants. Poncho is in the red pants. Okay. Um, that's the end of the fourth round. Arlene Limas is working Santiago's corner. Pancho is assisted by his brother and his team out of Wisconsin. Out. Again, between these rounds, what the fighters trying to do is trying to get some coaching, get their breath back, relaxation. They were trying to basically set up their next couple of combinations. Uh, normally, the uh, corner person is telling them how well they're doing or how bad they're doing with their points behind or ahead. Again, what you uh, want to expect to see out of Santiago now is a flurry in the fifth round. He's going to try and come up and basically put some more pressure on Pancho. Pancho needs to catch up. He's got to do something. He's going to have to try either knock out Santiago or he's basically going to have to uh, get a couple of eight counts at Santiago just to get his point to level up because uh, as it is right now, uh, I believe that Santiago has the edge by points. As we're getting ready for the fifth round, Because no. each fighter has to get eight kicks in, mandatory eight kick count. Eight solid kicks on and Santiago opens out spinning back fist. Execo, double jump by Pancho. Santiago in the white pants comes back with a hook. Oh, in the red pants is uh, Pancho coming back with an next kick. Now double round kick by Santiago. And Santiago is trying to work his way in. Pancho is backing up. He's backing up over Santiago. Nice hook kick by Pancho, but to no effect. And you know, it's uh, in the wide pants. Santiago is really putting pressure with the hands. So for it. Pancho here tries kind of with a back kick, and then a back kick back by Santiago, and a hook by Santiago, and a hook by Pancho. Jab right across to spinning back kick by Santiago. Pancho is up against the rope. Uppercut by Santiago. Round kick by Santiago. Pancho's trying to jam up. Uppercut by Boone Nogan. Back kick by Santiago. Cop Pancho comes back with a uh, left and a right spinning back fist. Okay, right now, basically, Santiago is working his way in, trying to set up for a finish. Pancho better start sticking something with Santiago's right now as everything is thrown has no effect on Santiago. And again, Pancho's in the red, Santiago's in the white. Spinning back fist by Pancho. And counter by a right by. Well, and a left and a, a left and a right by Santiago. Boom. Okay, spinning back kick by Santiago. No, his punch is backing up. He better start getting in there and cutting his corner. Comes back, left, right. Santiago's got punch on the ropes. He lets him walk off. And at the end of the match. And the winner is Santiago in the fifth round. And Santiago wins it by a majority decision at the end of this fight.
Ganji's Midwest Martial Arts. Uh, this section of the show, kickboxing with uh, Kamikaze Kevin Miller. Kevin Miller today is playing the Invisible Man. He won't be here because he is out uh, boxing for the uh, Golden Glove Championships. Good luck to him. We have uh, Brian Tasmanian Devil Silvers here next to me on my right. Anna, he will be going through some basic moves uh, with the pads. We're going to review some of the material. We'll show you some new material and some different stuff on it in regards to kickboxing. Okay. We're going to work on first is a jab jab cross combination. How to set yourself up. Make sure that the, uh, when you're working, you're assuming a 50 50 position. Your elbows are in, protecting the rib cage, chin slightly tucked down. You're looking slightly over your gloves on it. Now, the jab is always considered with your left side, whether you're fighting a regular orthodox or unorthodox, switch right side. Okay, or what they call a soft pause when you have your right lead. Orthodox or basic kickboxing, you have your left side lead. Go left side lead, please, okay? Again, go up the stance. You want to be on the ball, your back foot. You want to keep a 50 50 balance out. Now, the jab basically comes out from a stationary position, spins out into the pad, coming out exhaling, point of contact. Okay, now he's going to show you a cross. Okay, cross, cross, boom. Now, in combination, he's going to work jab, jab, cross. Boom. Okay, and good. Again, boom. So you see here what's happening, doing a little bit slow. He's jabbing out, setting the jab up, and then crossing as he's ro rolling his hip into the punch. One more, slow. One, two, three. Okay, let's reset again. Okay, now we're going to show you a jab, cross, hook combination. Now he's got the jab going, he's got the cross going, he's got the hook coming across the body. So again, one more time. One, two, three. Okay, go. One, two, three. Picking it up. This is a good combination to do. We obviously will have a ring here in one of our next section. We're going to show you how this worked up against the ropes. So the jab is basically going to hit across the face level. The cross sets it up, and then he's going to come into the body. Boom. Popping the rib area. Okay, in combination again. One, two, three. Okay, now this is normally followed up with either another hook. It's followed up with either another hook or an uppercut. So he's going to go jab, cross, hook, hook. Okay, again, go. Okay, now he's going to break the combination. Jab, cross, hook, uppercut. Again. Again. Okay, now he's going to go jab, cross to the pad. He's going to come uppercut, hook. Boom. Again, jab, cross, hook, uppercut. Boom. Again, jab, cross, hook, uppercut. Now, what's important in kickboxing, not only the fighter, but it's also the person that's holding the pad. Okay, if you're holding the pads, you don't want to hold them in front of your face or out too wide or too low. So you have to talk to each other. You know, he's got to tell me, hey, I want him closer, I want him wider, I want him lower, I want him higher. You have to have some type of repertoire between each other. Uh, somebody that doesn't know how to hold pads for you can really ruin your game. Okay, so again, pay attention to what you're doing with your training partner. Now again, I want... He's going to go jab, he's going to go jab, now he's going to come back, hook, hook, bam, bam, okay, now he's going to go jab, hook up to the head, hook to the body, go, jab, hook, bam, okay, now he's going to go jab, hook to the head, double hook to the body, go, bam, bam, pow, pow, okay, again, boom, bam, bam, all right, again, go, bam, bam, okay, good. In tight movements, you might want to work on is digging the jab. You say, what is digging the jab? Actually getting in tight and working the jab. So now, I mean, I'm sorry, the uppercut, not the jab. But now, he's going to work the uppercut. Look where I'm holding the pad. Now, when I'm holding the pad, I want to make sure that my chin isn't sticking out so I don't get it popped off. So he's going to work the uppercut. Go, boom, again, boom, again, boom. So you can make this tighter so he's really got to dig it in. Go, boom, okay, now he comes back the other way. Boom, go, boom, go, boom, go. Boom, go, boom, go, boom. You know, as I show slow motion, how he's bending his knees, riding the uppercut up, riding the uppercut up, riding the uppercut up. Okay, now, bobbing and weaving. Basically, what it is is if I throw this, he's going to go underneath my arm, boom, he's going to come up on the other side. Going back the other way, okay, going back the other way, going back the other way. And you can break up these drills into many variations. Now, I could go one, two, and then he can counter. Pop, 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 pop. Okay, so again, one, two, again, one, two, again, one, two, okay, now, besides setting up my mic again, we have to reset, now we're going to show you some kicking drills, excuse me for one second, okay, 
Besides kick, uh, the, besides the hand techniques, which are boxing techniques, we have the art of kicking and kickboxing, of course. Again, today we'd like to thank the Remo Martial Arts for donating um, part of the equipment for the set. So now what Brian's going to do is one of the, the basic kicks you see thrown heavily is what we call the round kick. Throw the round kick slow. Boom. Okay, do it slower. Boom. Now make sure when you're doing the round kick that you can just uh, not tap the back, but you rotate your base foot and you swing heavily into it. Okay, exhale again. Go. Okay, one more time. Go. Again, go. Okay, that's with the rear leg. He's rotating his base foot. He's rotating the hip. That short round kick without rotation of the hip. No, you know he's just basically dragging the leg up and just kicking it out. Again, so now short full rotation. Okay, sink down again. Ready? Okay, good. Okay, other basic state is kicking with the front leg front kick. Okay, again. Again. Okay, now front leg to rear leg. Go. Front leg. Front leg, go. Rear leg, go. Okay, these are basic kicks you, in, in, in kickboxing. Now, switch to the side. Now he's going to show a side kick. Okay, side kick can come from the front leg, can come from the rear leg, or he could switch up. I mean, he could do a, do a standing switch. Okay, boom. You know what I'm saying? Switch again. Now he's going to do, do, do a standing switch and then side kick, skip kick. Coming straight out. Okay, demonstrate that slow, please. He's switching, he's shifting up, boom, and kicking out, making contact with the bottom of the heel. Okay, switch and drive. Okay, one more time. Switch and drive. Boom. Now, usually in conjunction with your switch is you want to throw a fake. Throw a fake, boom, boom, and coming back out. Okay, one more time. Fake, boom, and back out. Okay, now, switch your left side. Throw a skip side kick with the lead leg. Okay, again, keep it low, please. Okay, you got to stay in the frame here. Okay, so again, we're back. So again, when you work in combinations, when you're working in, co in combination, you got to make sure that your hands are up. Okay, so you can throw a jab at me. You can throw a cross. You can throw that round kick at me. Boom. Okay, so again, you want to bring everything into play. When you're kickboxing, not the only thing, not only is kicking and punching very important, conditioning is number one. You have to be in superb condition so you don't burn out. Okay, on behalf of Kamikaze Kevin, okay, this is Shihan Joe Ganji along with Brian Tasmanian Devil Silvers. You'll be seeing as an upcoming great kickboxer. Look for him at our local kickboxing shows. This is Shihan Joe Ganji signing off. Thank you. This is Shihan Joe Ganges. This section of the show is called Samurai Tale, or the tail end of a story. Some of these stories are true. Some of them are fictional. Uh, it's up to you to decide. Today's tale has to do in regards with a man who wanted to be a great swordsman. And he approached the master, and he asked the master in regards to how long it would take him to uh, become a great swordsman. And the master says, well, it will take you at least five years of training. He replied by saying, well, I'll train twice as hard. And the master said, in that case, it will take you 10 years. And he said, that the man asked the master, well, master, what if I turn around and train with my whole devotion? I will train 24 hours a day for five years. Can I become a sword master? He says, in that case, it will take you 30 years. And with that, the man said, well, basically, I don't understand what you're getting to. Uh, the master then said, if you want to be a student of the sword, you must accept my ways, you must do anything that I ask. And with that, the student replied by saying, yes, sir, I will. His task for basically the first six months was cleaning the master's house, chopping wood, doing all the chores that the masters needed done, as opposed to nowadays where you could go to your local studio, sign up, and have your lessons taught where you don't even have to pick up your towel if you're dropping on the mat. Again, if you're a martial arts student, Take care of this. Make sure 
you focus on keeping your area clean and helping the instructor out. Continuing with the story, what happened is that uh, the man went up to the master and said, Master, I've been doing this for six months. You haven't taught me one lesson. With that, the master began by, as soon as the student turned around, hit him in the head with a stick. And the student replied, saying, Oh, Master, why'd you hit me? He goes, That was your first lesson. From then on, every time the student was not aware, the master kept beating him with a stick. Whether he was doing the clothes or he was cleaning in the kitchen, and one time he attacked him when he was sleeping. The master severely gave him a beating with his rattan stick. The student said, this was absurd. You're asking me to defend myself without learning any techniques. Eventually what happened was that the student was so aware that when the master tried to strike him one day, he automatically sensed it, dodged the movement, and so forth. He moved out the way. With that, the, the uh, master replied, now you're on your test to become a great swordsman. So what is the moral of the story? It's not, don't time yourself in martial arts by how long is it going to take me to get my black belt or I want to be a champion in X amount of time. It's a life quest. It's something that you have to accept. You cannot put a base time on it. Uh, the problem with today's martial arts is everybody wants to become a black belt in 12 months. Well, there's a lot of places out there where you can pay your money and become a black belt in 12 months. That doesn't mean you're a martial artist. You're nothing but a uh, basically assembly line student. Be aware of this. If you go to a good school and you have a good instructor on it, do the tasks that he asks. Don't ask any questions. Don't ask him when you're going to get your belt. Again, be aware. Be prepared. That's our tail end of our story. So it's up to you to decide whether it's true or not. Now we're going to go to our questions. Our first question is, sir? First question is, what is eclectic style and what does it suggest? What, is, what are the benefits? Eclectic style basically suggests that, that you pick for my various different techniques that suit you in a self-defense situation, sparring situations, as opposed to a traditional mode. Now, as an eclectic, you combine a variety of punching, kicking, throwing, where some styles only call for kicking or punching. In eclectic, you could use a combination mix. Next question. What is woman's self-defense, and how is it different from martial arts in general? Well, women's self-defense course is, is a crash course on technique. Basically, you learn enough to kick and run, get yourself in a situation so you could uh, live another day. It's not asking you to repeat a technique until it's, it's totally refined by repeating it tens of thousands of times until that technique is correct. It's just basically showing you how to hit a few vital areas, kick and run defense, and being aware. Question three. Should uh, practicing self-defense allow contact? Practicing self-defense should allow contact. People ask, well, why? Because how are you going to know? If you're not making contact, it's like learning how to swim on dry land. You have to get in the water to know where you're at with this. Uh, anybody who practices self-defense without contact is a rude awakening when a situation does occur. You're going to be in for a lot of trouble, a lot of despair, a lot of agony. Uh, practice self-defense with somebody who doesn't mind getting hit, have them wear armor. Make sure when you go to a studio that you learn how to, how to hit pads, how to hit bags, and the instructor associates the techniques with impact, not just doing a lot of aer aerobics. We've had students come into our studio after anywhere between one year to ten years of training haven't hit it so much as a pad. So again, if you want to learn self-defense, you have to learn impact. If you want to be a good martial artist, you have to have impact in your training. Again, be aware of your surroundings. Know where you're at. Have your on light anytime you leave your house, and better yet, when you're in your house. A lot of people think that their house is a safe haven. People can come at you through your windows. They could be in your house when you walk in. They could be in your house when you walk out of your house as you're walking out. Check your surrounding, watch your cars, watch the zones that you're getting yourself into. By zones, what I mean is you're walking towards your car, scan the area. You're walking towards your apartment or house, scan your surroundings. Again, carry something with you that's available such as keys or pepper spray or a stick if you're jogging out alone or if you're on your bike. Have something that's going to help you in an in tight situation. This is Shihan Joganji signing off for Joe Ganji's martial arts report. Thank you. I'd like to thank the staff, everybody that helped out on the show, and thanks our guests. Thank you. Be aware, be prepared, be safe.